What's going on guys, it's Toxicity here again. And I'm trying to pump out this RB World 4 content. I know a lot of new players are going to be really struggling to get open right now. And with shooters just being able to shoot over everybody, not many people are actually focusing on how to get open in ISO. Because you can literally just pull over anybody with Samuel Parker and Eric Fox. As I'm about to do in this clip right here. Off dribble, green pull up. But anyways, today, I'm going to be going over a shot creator guide. First of all, thank you guys so much. The views on these recent videos have been absolutely insane. Some of my best ever. But off that topic, today I'm going to be showing you guys how to ISO in RB World 4 with shot creators. Now here are my settings. You can go ahead and pause the video and look at them, but I'm going to go ahead and explain why they're so good. Auto switch handles off, obviously. You want to be able to switch handles on your own. Dribble moves advanced. Simple, apparently you can dribble glitch with simple dribbling, but if you really want to be able to make space, you're going to have to use advanced dribbling. Dribble input window is short. I'm a controller player this year, and right stick dribbling can be a little bit a little bit off but with short you can actually drag the right stick in a circle to do spin moves uh, you can actually do all handles I tried very short but I couldn't do the double under the legs with very short because my hands just weren't fast enough but if you are really fast and you get really good at controller then short is the best double tap window euroing is actually really really hard for some reason in drop step so personally I put medium uh, POV low for controller camera is really good for defense and it's also very good for ISOing because it follows the ball and it's lower so you can see everything that's going on. It's really good for ISOing in the corner as well because it follows you and turns your camera automatically. Field of view 65, personally, you can do anything you want but 65 is just the basic. I think it's the default actually. Controller vibration medium, I might turn that off. Uh, dribble stick dead zone is 2.75, uh, that's just something I found. It works pretty well. Left stick dead zone 2.5, I haven't really messed with that. I think it's, I think I lowered it to 2.5, but that's kind of just the default. And yeah, those are all my settings. So the first thing that I'm gonna say to do, make sure you go lab in practice for dribble moves because honestly, while fades are a little bit broken this year because of space creator, you can still get locked if you're not able to dribble and just practicing all your moves, making sure your settings are optimal, changing your settings if you need to. But mostly just going in and dribbling, shooting, getting your timing down, getting your dribble combos down. If you can make really good combos, you're going to be really good this year. But anyways, let's get into the real tutorial. <laughs> Alright. So the first thing that you want to learn in RB World 4 with dribbling is spacing. You've got to keep the optimal amount of distance between you and your defender. As you see here, he can never get fully onto me and because of that, when I do the hop shot, it's slightly open, sometimes even wide open. This year, there's force ball pickup. So if you dribble too much and somebody bumps into you, you're going to pick up the ball or just stumble and it throws off your dribbling entirely. And shot clock really doesn't feel like 24 seconds this year because of how slow the movement is to start. So you want to keep the optimal amount of spacing between you and your defender at all times. Now the next thing is knowing when to fade. When you get a shot creator, and I know this from playing a lot of games against shot creators, especially in RB World 3, shot creators just love to pull fades and they do the same moves over and over again. Like right there, that is not a good fade. Obviously it went in because I timed it really well, but you've got to be able to know when to fade. If somebody's playing really off of you, then turn around and fade. But if somebody's not, then go in and take the lay because nobody's really playing lay defense this year. And if you take a bad shot, you're just selling your team. And you don't want to do that, especially with a shot creator. Knowing how good bigs are this year, how good post scores are going to be, you can't lose the ball as a guard unless you've got a big on your team. And shot creator defense isn't exactly the greatest either, so yeah. Alright, so the next thing, take your layups. Nobody's going to want to hear this this year, but like, in this clip... He's playing extremely high on me, I'm dribbling, I'm not going anywhere, so I fake the fade, run in, take a wide open layup. Nobody is guarding layups this year in the 1v1s that I have played. Everybody is really worried about the fades because of space creator, and if you have an open layup, especially when my player drops when stats are low, you need to be able to take your layups. Shot creators are really fast this year, from what I've seen, and also, with the dribble moves you have to be able to get open, but everybody's going to play really high, so just take your layups. Too many people try and go for ankle breakers and crazy clips. Just don't do that. Just take your layups. This is what 
Well, I can't only say bad things about ankle breakers. You guys know I love my ankle breakers from my videos, but I will give a few tips on ankle breakers. You're not necessarily going to have to go crazy with them unless you're a play shot or some type of playmaking with ankle breakers, since ankle breakers are apparently going to be really good this year. But unlike RB World 3, Snatchback I don't believe is going to be the meta for getting ankle breakers. Uh, a lot of my ankle breakers have actually come off of just doing double behind the backs. Uh, just doing a move when the defender is running up on you. And doing that increases your chance of ankle breakers. It's really easy to get ankle breakers this way. I don't know really the meta for how to get them. You can sprint on defense more than in RB World 3, but I still really don't recommend it. Um, you can use ankle breakers to your advantage because a lot of people will try and play up to get pushes so they can't get broken. Or they'll play back and then that's when you can just fade which is what I was talking about earlier. So yeah, ankle breakers are a really good way to add to your game. Just don't fiend for them, because that's how you're going to lose games. Alright, a quick little underrated move that I like to use. I call it stuttering. It's basically just walking back to the three-point line, or walking back in the middle of your ISO. Uh, it forces you to play up, because something that I didn't mention in my video yesterday, every build can shoot threes as you saw when I got lights on that 3 after the ankle breaker. But as you see there, you just drive right by your opponent, they play super far up, you can reset your dribble like I do here, and then just stutter a little bit, like right here. I just do a little bit of a move, fake the fade, and boom, I've got a wide open lane because he tried to play up. Stuttering is really effective and it's something that I 100% recommend. So, because this is a shot creator tutorial and not a shot creating tutorial, I know it's mostly ISO, but I do want to touch on defense a little bit. Defense is very hard in RB World 4. I'm going to be honest, you can literally just get shot over. You have to be right on top of people and jump to get a heavily contest, and sometimes that doesn't even stop people, especially when they have their streak. You want to be able to push up on them and force them to pick up the ball. If you're constantly on top of them, they're not going to be able to get into their rhythm, especially like in that last clip on Mike Johnson. One of the fastest and highest handle rating builds in the game could not do anything. Uh, you're going to get shot over. Uh, there was one clip, I think I showed it, just got pulled over. Right in his face, wide open. Couldn't do anything about it. So defense is especially important. You always want to stay on them. And defense was actually the reason I won this 1v1. Shout out to Noah, by the way, for helping me get these clips. But yeah, that's defense. Not really much to say, it needs to get fixed. The last thing I'm going to say, just a little bit of a quality of life change, especially for people that are playing this for a really long time. Colorblind settings are actually huge. I'm using the setting called, excuse me if I pronounce it wrong, Deuteranopia. It's so nice. It just, the green takeover, the badges, it's just really good on the eyes. And for somebody that streams this game for a long time, I can say that it definitely does work. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and I hope it helps you. And I'll see you on the next video. Peace out.